Hello. Welcome on back to my channel, you guys. Today I'm so excited for, because for the very first time in the history of my channel, I'm going to be showing you how I style my model's hair, in addition to, of course, <laughs> the makeup tutorial. And I've done this in partnership with Function of Beauty, so a huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video. So with that said, if you guys wanna learn how I created this complete look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'll be using this Function of Beauty hair mask. I'm sectioning Vanessa's hair in about two inch widths, working a good amount of that hair mask product into the palms of my hands, and then running that through the roots, really focusing this near the edges of the hairline. And because I'm doing a slicked back hair look today with a light wave, it's not necessary to bring this product through the ends of the hair, since we'll later be going in with a curler. So just keep this product closer to the scalp. And once I'm done with this section, I'm going to repeat this step until I make my way to the other side of her face. Now, of course, you can use hairspray or gel or whatever you like, but I'll tell you why I love using this Function of Beauty hair mask for this. It adds enough grip and hold to the hair that once it dries down and settles in, the hair takes shape and it doesn't move. But even better, your hair is being treated all while rocking this hairstyle. Now, I custom made this hair mask for myself along with the shampoo and the conditioner that I'll show you here. I love how they, um, I love how they put your name on the product. <laughs> Isn't that great? But anyways, you literally customize your own products through their online hair quiz. That means creating a product based on your hair type, your hair structure, scalp moisture, your hair goals, the, the fragrance you want it to be in, if any, the color you want it to be in. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. For my products specifically, my goals consisted of lengthening my hair. It was to add volume and to deep condition. And while I also wanted the 100% natural fragrance of eucalyptus, which also feels feels really refreshing on the scalp, I must say, but truly, I highly recommend you check out their site for yourself. I'll link their website down below, and the brand was nice enough to give us 20% off, which automatically applies at checkout when you use the link below. I personally love a custom hair product that works for me, you know, and I really believe you'll love it just as much as I do. Okay, so we're just finishing up with this last section and now I'm gonna take a wide tooth comb, create a part in the hair where I want it to be, brush and tame it down in the style I want it to hold in and then take a little clip to hold it there. Now this look is versatile, so you don't have to part your hair if you don't want to. You can just slick it all back out of your face or whatever you want, but I love a good side part. And I'll do the same thing for the other side too. Brush down the hair in the style I want it to set in, Take a couple of clips, pin the hair into place, and by the time I'm done with the makeup and I take the clips out, the hair will be set and it won't move anywhere. Okay, next I'm taking pretty large sections of hair and creating soft curls with an inch and a quarter curling iron, starting from the nape of the neck and working my way up. I'm speeding this up a little bit because otherwise, you know, we'll be here all day, but you get the idea, curling the hair in sections and curling the hair in the same direction. That's really important because that's what's gonna give us that soft wave effect when we brush it out. If it's difficult for your hair to hold a curl, I recommend using smaller sections or a bit of soft hold hairspray or texture spray before using the iron. Or you can hold the iron on the hair a little longer than I am, but Vanessa has a natural wave to her hair already. So using this iron is just manipulating the hair pattern to curl in the same direction. Once we have those curls in, I'm heading back to my wide tooth comb and lightly brushing through those curls. It takes a little patience, but as you start brushing everything together and shaping the hair into that Hollywood soft wave you want it to be in, it begins to look really beautiful. I mean, you see what I'm talking about here? It looks soft and effortless in the back, but we kept it edgy and modern in the front with a slicked back hairline. Okay, now that the hair is done, let's start on the makeup. I'm using the Ren Ready Steady Glow Daily AHA Tonic to tone our model skin. This is a great toner if you're somebody who's looking for something that exfoliates, visibly brightens and tightens and hydrates for a smooth, even, and energized looking complexion. You'll find it leaves the skin just a tad bit tacky after using it, but 
I find a moisturizer works really well on top of it. You'll also notice that I'm applying this on with a soft cotton pad to the complete areas of the face in a really delicate style. Once I have this applied, I'm using the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Dew Drops, applying this right on top. Now I'll say there, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of skincare steps in today's tutorial. There's even another skincare product after this step, but they all work together to create the results I want while also treating, nourishing, and protecting Vanessa's skin. This product is wonderful too because it contains niacinamide, so it supports the skin barrier, reduces the size of pores, improves texture, balances oil production, and the best part is it's great for all skin types. Once we're finished working this into the face, neck, chest, and shoulders, the last skincare product I'm using today is the Super Goop Glow Screen, which has SPF of 40. This look today is all about the skin, y'all. I'm barely going in with any foundation afterwards, so I really want to make the skin as glowy and radiant as possible. And I use this as the last step, not only because it has that SPF in it, but also these tiny little reflex in the formula that make your skin look super luminous and radiant. Of course, if you prefer more of a matte finish, uh, the Super Goop brand has different formulas that don't contain those reflex, but that's the look we're going for today. And this product is the perfect last step to leave the skin naturally supple and dewy from the inside out. For foundation today, I'm using the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation in the shade 7.8, applying a small amount to the back of my hand and only applying it to particular areas of the face where I find a blemish or a bit of redness from inflammation. And I'll apply some to around the eye area too. It's really, really important to me though that I showcase our model's stunning skin and freckles in this look. I don't want to cover them up with a full coverage foundation. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a tutorial with her showing how I created a double winged liner on her. And if you remember, I didn't include the complexion steps of that tutorial because <laughs> honestly, 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 I, I felt I covered too much up. Even though she looked incredible with the makeup, don't get me wrong. Looking at the before and the after, I really felt her skin looked better without the makeup. I'm not supposed to say that as a makeup artist, but it did look better without the makeup. And I know you would never know without seeing the before, but now that you see how naturally gorgeous her skin is, you'll understand my reasoning behind how I apply the complexion products today. And I know some of you tune in to watch the drama and the makeup transformation and all, so not to worry, I'll be creating a pretty dramatic eye look on her today. As for how I'm applying this though, I'm using my fingers because I like warming up the product on the back of my hand and really pressing this into the skin, giving it more of a natural looking finish. Once we have that foundation applied, I'm using this Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blush in the shade Grateful and applying this onto her cheeks with a blush brush. This is one of those products that you want to be careful with. It's extremely pigmented, which is great because we don't have to use much of it, but if you use too much, it can go a very, <laughs> very different direction. That's why I prefer applying it on with a brush rather than dropping it onto the skin from the applicator. The brush gives me a softer, more diffused application before further blending and pressing this product in with my fingers. Doesn't this color look beautiful? I think it adds the perfect kiss of color to the skin without looking overpowering. Now that we have the blush applied, I'm using this Jouer Cosmetics Essential Liquid Concealer in the shade Creme Cafe to brighten the under eye. I'm applying this just to the lower inner corner of the eyes and I'm gonna leave it there for a few minutes while we powder the rest of the face. To powder, I'm using this one size translucent ultimate setting powder and lightly applying this to the face, avoiding the area where we placed that concealer. Now, of course, if you like a more matte look, you can use more powder, but for today's look, I want a more glossy finish to the skin, which I know is not everyone's cup of tea. Some of you will love that dewy finish while Others will say that she looks sweaty, you know? The same goes for when I do looks using, you know, a lot of powders. Some love the matte finish, some say it looks too cakey. So try not to get too caught up in the amount of product that I'm using. Focus more on the technique and customize the amount of products to use to get that finish you're looking for. And as you can see here, I'm taking a sponge, blending and diffusing out that concealer before setting it with a powder puff using the same translucent powder we used on the rest of the face earlier.
So now that we have the complexion complete, I'm gonna start on the brows using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze. I use this by first applying this product against the direction the hairs grow in before running it the other way. And I find that this just allows for the hairs to become fully saturated with the product. The product will start to dry down as it's applied. So you're gonna to wanna to work quickly with it. You can see here that once I have the hairs saturated with it and start brushing them upwards, they really start to take hold. Vanessa loves that brush brushed up soap brow, supermodel brow that's in trend right now. So that's the look we're going for. And once we have the hair styled in the position we want it to be in, I'm taking this Anastasia Beverly Hills brow pen in the shade dark brown to work on the details of this brow. Really getting in there to draw in some realistic brow hairs in the areas that are, that are a little sparse. This is one of my favorite products from Anastasia. I personally use it on the daily. It's great not only for drawing in brow hairs, but also it works well for a subtle eyeliner or even to draw on faux freckles. All right, this brow is just about complete. I'm gonna finish the other one off camera and then start on the eye makeup. To do so, I'm using this shade here from the ABH Norvina Volume 5 eyeshadow palette and smoking this out on the complete upper lid. There's no rhyme or reason to this. This is just the backdrop color to the others that we'll be using. So don't overthink it too much, just throw the color on there and start blending and blending. Next, I'm mixing these two shades from the same eyeshadow palette and placing that right above her crease. I find the easiest way to do this is to look straight ahead or have your client look straight ahead and start drawing right above the area where the lid naturally creases. This is really gonna open up the eye, give it some dimension and really add some drama. You know the look I'm going for today is that, that 60s retro mod eye look. Twiggy did it, Cher did it, I guess everyone kind of did it back in those days. They'd go with a deep color right in the crease and I think it's really fun and glamorous. To really make the center of the lid pop, I'm dipping into this shade here from the Huda Beauty Lilac Eyeshadow Palette and placing this right in the center of the upper lid, just below that crease. Now, I usually don't switch between different eyeshadow palettes in a tutorial because I like to make it as simple as possible, but I really feel like I needed this bright matte shade to achieve the look I had in mind. And then to really make this look pop, I'm using the shimmer here from the same Huda Beauty palette and just lightly applying this to the inner corner and center of the lid. It's the little details like this that really make the biggest difference, you know? Just a little here and a little there starts to bring the look together. But you know me, once I, <laughs> once I start on shimmer, I can't stop there. So I'm spraying a light mist of setting spray onto the face and eye makeup before taking this Anastasia Beverly Hills glitter and gently pressing that right on top of those eyeshadows. You don't need a lot of this. In fact, I think less is more with this glitter. And boy, doesn't that look so pretty. It just gives a little glitz and glamor to it all. Okay, next I'm using this Patrick Ta eyeliner in the shade Cream and running this through the lower water line. This is gonna open up the eye a bit. It's a nice shade if you're looking for a nude liner. It's not too white, it's not too yellow, it's not too pink. It's a nice shade that'll work on a variety of skin tones to brighten and open up the eyes. And once I have this applied on, I'm gonna use the same eyeshadow shades that I had used in the upper lid to apply and smoke out on the bottom. Alrighty, so next with this Point Made Liquid Eyeliner from One Size, I'm running this along the upper lash line and winging it out and <laughs> oh my goodness gracious, my heart is, is, is going up by the minute just watching this. Ah, <laughs> I really don't like doing eyeliner, but I had to. For this look, it just wouldn't be the same without it. Once I finished up this look, I'm gonna use this Ciate London Wonder Wand Mascara and run a good amount of this through the upper lashes. I'll also run this through the lower lashes in a minute, but I'm starting with the top because I'm preparing them for the falsies I'm about to apply on. The lashes I'm using today are these lashes from Tati Lashes in the style TL19. These are nice for today because they're nothing too dramatic, so they're, they're not gonna upstage the eye makeup. You know what I'm saying? And then once I have this lash applied, I'm gonna head back to the mascara, and as promised, I'm running this through the lower lashes. Now, in the beginning of this tutorial, I was referring to the video I posted a few weeks ago with the same model, Vanessa, where I showed you how I do a double-winged liner. I really liked how it turned out on her, so I'm doing 
doing the same thing today, maybe just a little more like <laughs> subtle. To do this, I've dipped into a black eyeshadow with an angled liner brush and extending out her lower lash line before adding that bright lilac shade from the Huda Beauty palette in the center of those two wings. I'll link down below the tutorial I'm talking about. It's quick and easy and it's a little more detailed. So now I'm gonna complete the other eye off camera and then use this Morphe lip liner in the shade Sweet Tea to line her lips with. You've probably seen me use this lip liner a dozen times by now. It's one of my go-tos for a nude lip. I need to get a Morphe discount code one of these days because I do use this all of the time, but I feel like every beauty guru and their grandmother has a Morphe discount code by now, so there's already plenty of them for you to choose from. This liner is super affordable anyways. I think it's only like four, five, six bucks, which is great for the makeup artists watching who want to leave behind lip products with a client for them to touch up with throughout the day. It doesn't cost a whole lot and it's a little something that your client will appreciate. All right, now I'm using the Ciate London Color Flip Gloss in the shade Amethyst. This is one of the more recent finds that I've really been loving lately. I've been using it on myself even. This shade is beautiful and the formula is really interesting. It doesn't feel sticky or it doesn't even feel like a gloss really. It almost feels like a, a cream lipstick or a lip nourishing treatment. It's really, really nice and it makes for the perfect nude lip. For the final step of this look, I'm using the brand new Huda Beauty Shimmering Dry Body Oil, spritzing this along the shoulders and chest before blending it in with a large fan brush. I was really, really excited when I had received this in PR because I love anything that makes the skin glow. And you can see here just how beautiful and radiant and sun-kissed it leaves the skin. I highly recommend, and you'll definitely be seeing me use this again. But this officially makes for the final step in how I created this makeup and hair look today Today on our naturally beautiful model. There we have it kids. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.